Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Kaysen. With me today is life coach and LOA teacher, Joel Elston. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Joel, today the topic, as you know, is synchronicity. And of course, before we even got started, we found a synchronicity. I mean, we just like right out of the gate before <laughs> we even turned the microphones on. You're talking about a synchronicity because you, you caught a piece of the podcast that I recorded with Louis D'Souza, who came back for a visit, and Anne Marie Young. We were, and we were talking once again about AI, which has been a hot topic around here. And I, I don't remember exactly how you phrased it, but the, the way you said it basically said to me, we are synchronous on this idea that AI is pretty damn cool. I mean, it's scary in some ways. It, it has all kinds of amazing possibilities. As Louis was pointing out today, the upward trajectory is practically straight upward on the graph right now. It, it, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it really is. I, I'm excited to, I don't know much about it. I played with it a little bit. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before the show, if I weren't doing all the stuff I were doing now, my full attention would be in that topic yeah. right now. I, I would be all in that because I, I, I just see the such unlimited potential and, uh, the little bit that I do use it, I'm just blown away by how helpful it is. Oh, yeah. Very helpful. And, yeah. and I love, he. I, I don't know if you heard, he recommended an AI called Pi.ai, which I tried after the show. I'm very impressed. I was telling you before, yeah. there's a thing called the Turing test. If you're not sure what that is, look it up. It's based on uh, one of the original founders of modern computing, Alan Turing, who was a code breaker for the British during World War II. But the Turing test is essentially a test to determine if you're talking to somebody, are you talking to a human being or are you talking to a machine? If you, you're talking to a machine and you think you're talking to a human being, it passed the Turing test. Yes. I gotta tell you, Pi.ai comes really close to passing the Turing test. It's really yes. impressive. That's amazing. It really is. And I, I just, uh, I really think that's the, the when, when we're talking, one of the, uh, I remember a long time ago, when Google first came out, my son TJ was in middle school mm -hmm. and he got in trouble. And I actually went and successfully got him out of trouble over using Google for his homework. <laughs> and, uh, it, it they, and I said, first of all, you, you never told him he couldn't use Google for his homework. <laughs> so right off the bat, you know, they didn't even know what he was talking about because he, he they thought he was cheating. Because he he was using this information, he and he rewarded his. It was he wasn't plagiarizing, but he got the information. They said there's no way he knows all this. And I said, well, he he found it on the computer, and he, he used this thing called Google. And they they said, well, that's cheating. And no, it's not. He's, he's used, and I find it ironic that today the the now we're here we're years later. The, this is the next level. Uh, yeah. This is AI. It, it's Google was so gigantic had a huge impact as we know and i think ai is that next jump up from google it's 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 yeah and it could have taken it you know to the other level and and so i i remember that and I, i've actually defended the kid that was using ai for his uh homework and stuff and i got him on the same basic topic as i did many years ago with tj i said uh I, I just before we get started, I just need to see where in your rules that he's not allowed to use AI. We'll just we'll concede the meeting. They said we haven't written the rules yet. I said I guess we're done then, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like well, yeah. I said because just it's a, to me you don't ban them for Google. So uh, fascinating topics. I love it. Well, well, Louis also made a really interesting point about a year, year and a half ago, while he was still a regular co-host here on the show. He said that anything that a student can Google should not be on a school's curriculum. And, and it, it really makes sense because it's essentially a waste of time to sit in a classroom to learn what he can learn so much faster by plugging into Google. So if you're going to have a school curriculum, it should actually exceed what Google could do. Well, now we've just raised that to the next level. Now you have to yeah. see what an AI can do. Yeah. And I, I have, a, a, there are times when I will do for some trainings that I do, I will create, uh, test, uh, like for example, if I'm doing you know certification credits and stuff like that, I, I have to have an end of video test. And mm -hmm. so I intentionally write a new test that you can't Google the answers. Oh, okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. But when I have taken I, I, these I, tests, I got to interrupt though. How do you do that? I, I mean, Google has access to so much information. How do you know that Google doesn't have a particular piece? 
Well, I'm talking about the level because historically, I will out myself. There are times when I've taken those tests myself. I would just copy a line and then search on Google, and then it would pull the whole sentence up and say, "There it is." You understand? Yeah. It, it, so I I will just put it in like I can't get them getting the answer, but I can stop them from. They have to look harder. Is my point oh, by me doing? Yeah. So I, I don't use a, a sentence that out of somebody else's book. I just create my own version of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I, I put it in an order that you can still get to the answer, but you're not going to be able to get to the answer, but just by simply copying a sentence and finding it automatically. I, I'm reminded of a, I think it was a Harvard professor, a Harvard philosophy professor. If it wasn't Harvard, it was one of the top schools, but I think it may have been Harvard. Uh, Harvard philosophy professor gave a final exam in a philosophy class. And the final exam was an essay. It was only an essay. There was no multiple choice, no true or false, just an essay. And the essay had a one word question. And the one word question was, why? Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's, you can't, you can't defeat that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it turns out that the, the correct answer that you you got partial credit if you said because, but it wasn't a full answer. The, the, the complete answer to give you full credit was why not? Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> Just I, saying. I, 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 yeah, you can imagine. See, I would have failed drastically because I my mind went to about a thousand page document of <laughs> <Right>? why. <laughs> I I have all the answers of why, and, and one of them was not why not. That why was not, not my answer. <laughs> yeah. Here's why. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, this this ties into the topic fairly fairly well. I think. I mean, the topic is synchronicity. Uh, which can be defined in a number of different ways, but I'll define it as uh, something uh, that multiple people experience at the same time in different locations. That's one way you can define it. And in 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 the way this ties in, we we essentially are now facing a future where, and it's an imminent future. It's right here. It's not distant. It's not in the the, the deep distant future. It's like it's arrived, where all of a sudden a lot of the standards for human behavior for human interaction are disappearing because of mm -hmm. the way the technology has has already started to shift things and so we as human beings are finding ourselves having to deal with that on a synchronous basis we're all experiencing it in different locations at the same time that's and that, there's a great example of synchronicity. Now it's it, it's not perfectly synchronous. It's not like at the exact same instant that I am fretting over what's going on with this. You're fretting what's going on over there. It ne doesn't necessarily get to that degree of synchronicity, but it's still synchronous. Well, and, you know the the and I agree the you know the using the word coincidence is almost always replaced by being synchronous. And you know that that's in my in my world. So. I, I look at it, uh, law of attraction stuff, you know, where, where, when, you know, my, my book that I've been working on for the last five years, uh, the law of action, as I'm still working on it, that, there's a whole set. There, <laughs> there's a great know, token I, there somewhere. <laughs> there is. Oh yeah. It, 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 I've taken a lot. In fact, I've taken way too much action is the problem with the law <laughs> of action. I, <laughs> there is too much action. I figured that out, but you know, the, the, we can induce synchronicity. And by taking action towards something that using the law of attraction, uh, a lot of times synchronistic events are simply the law of attraction fulfilling what you're what you're seeking or at your after. It seems like wow, that was amazing. Not reality, not reality. That's what you've been wanting and attracting. So the the synchronicity is a big thing for me, and I, I see it constantly all the time. Carl Jung says it's. Synchronicity is ever present for those that are willing to see it. That's Carl oh, Young was big in synchronicity. And the the idea that they're really, I, I believe, and again, this is where I really get into my deep dive law of attraction stuff, that the energy that we're putting out is what the energy we're attracting is, which is law of attraction. Mm -hmm. Then the synchronicity is the actual connection of that energy. And it, it seems I'm awestruck every time it happens. And it just, There'll, there'll be stuff that just just absolutely doesn't. I, I it never fails me. If I think of somebody that I haven't spoken with in years, mm. within two or three days, I I I, I just laugh because I, I get a message. Hey, just thinking about you the other day. What's going on? That happens so frequently with me. I, I just I can't believe how often it happens. And so 
uh, that's a great example of synchronicity. Why I, I uh, one of my really good friends now, years ago, many years ago, uh, we we were we were acquaintances, but she was director of this uh, pre K program, and with one of the school systems, and she's my neighbor, and so we just knew each other. So it was Christmas time, and I normally you know help out two or three families. I do things just whatever, and I'd got I'd wasted my time and never gotten really found anybody to help. You know, I like to go find families that need help, help them directly. So it's like December 14th. And I sent her a, a, a message. I said, you know, I, this is weird, but I'm looking to, you need anybody that needs any help. And her question to me, she said, did God tell you to email me? <laughs> and I said, what? And I go, uh, maybe uh, possibly. <laughs> and uh, she, she said, I literally just got an email from this lady who failed to get her. She, there's a program where you can say, here's what I need help with for Christmas. Mm -hmm. She didn't get it in time. And she said, is there any way I, I know I'm sorry, I missed the deadline. She's all the money has been spent. And she was asking, is there any way she could get any assistance to get her kids a few presents for Christmas? And literally that email arrived within minutes of before my email arriving. Wow. Now, again, that's how random this is. This is somebody, now we're very good friends now, but at the time we were just acquaintances. And mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even know why she popped into my mind. I just knew she did something with lower income families. I thought, well, I'll just reach out to her. So the timing of that, uh, I have to pay attention to that. I have to look at that. What, what, what are the odds? What are we gonna call it? It's just certainly, I wanted to help, somebody needed help. And this person who just was a conduit to that, it just, it, it, it would have been, it wouldn't seem as exciting to me if, yeah, I got an email yesterday for a lady that, that needs help. I literally got an email a few minutes ago and I, she said, I was actually trying to figure out how I'm going to pay for it myself. And then you send the message. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's so cool. That's really cool. The way that works. I, I'm thinking back to uh, years ago, the, the person that I was, the, the skeptic that I was, and I'm, in many ways, I still am a skeptic, but not like I was back then. That skeptic would have been, you know, just rolling his eyes at this whole idea of synchronicity. Sure. And, and would essentially say that synchronicity is, you know, okay, I understand what you're saying. It's kind of a cool idea, but there really isn't any evidence to support it. That's what my argument would have been. And then since then, I've experienced it so many times, it makes me wonder, I wonder how many times I have to experience something before I start to believe it's true. Mm. That's I, I know point, my case, it took quite a few. I, I need. Yeah. I probably needed. I don't know, a few dozen, something like that. Pro yeah, I, I don't know how many for me, but it, it it it's to a point now. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm sort of like, yeah, well, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. I, I know it's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, well, I know it's coming. It, it, again, mentioning the person contacted me. There's a client hadn't seen him in years, doing really well. Is off to school. He, he just popped into my brain. I wonder how he's doing. You know, uh, hope he's doing well. So, again, the next day, message from the client. I don't know why, Joel. I just want to say hi. Thanks for all you did years ago. Things are fantastic. I'm like, how, how, I mean, why? You know, so my energy thinking about him, obviously, in my mind, again, skeptics will go, okay, Joel, just, you know, whatever. But I really believe that that connection, and then, then, then if you want to hop into some quantum theory, you know, quantum entanglement would recommend or suggest that, you know, what if we're quantumly entangled with everybody we ever met on some level? Uh, and, you know, what if that's the case? Yeah. And, you know, and not not a, all the time, not like, like a full blown quantum entanglement. But what if there's you know particles or or whatever that are entangled? Where hey, I'm wondering what that is. There's a connection there. I all that stuff, the synchronicity of life. I to watch things happen and and see how they unfold. My whole life, everything that happened in my life, where I'm sitting here, you know, you know the story. You've heard it over and over and over. There's been probably ten synchronistic events. They weren't revealed in real time, but they all led to this moment. And it, it would seem impossible if I told you these 10 things had to happen for me to be where I'm sitting today, it would be, it would be the odds are just, there's no way possible that could happen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I, when I look at, you know, where I was and where I am and the, 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 the things that 
even my wrong moves were right moves. That's the other <laughs> part that maybe, you know, uh, the wrong moves put me in place to be in the right place for the right moves. Yeah. It sounds so odd, but synchronicity is at play at all time. And then the, the more you're tuned into it in allowing it and using the law of attraction, I think we do, you know, we, we are always in, inducing our own synchronicities. Of course, I believe that, sure. but you can actually increase the positive synchronicities by, you know, just, just being aware of it, looking at it and you know, not dismissing it as coincidence. When I meet somebody and, and I, I don't know how true this is, and, and cause I, I, but there's a feeling there are times when I'll meet somebody and it's like, yeah, okay, that, that's fine. Uh, I meet so many people so many times, you know, I, I don't ever see most of the people I ever meet again, mm-hmm. but, but every now and then I'll meet somebody and it's like this, something about that person and then somehow that person's late later playing the role and uh it, it's an amazing feeling and I, I i obviously don't have full understanding how that happens but when you leave, live a synchronistic lifestyle meaning you're you're open to the concept you're putting your energy out there you're you identifying it then you attract more things to be synchronistic about i mean it's, it's all combined and it's just it's just to me it's just fascinating uh, and I'm in awe of it every time it happens. But like you're saying, I do expect it to happen. Now I'm not shocked by it, but I'm still in awe of it when it does happen. I like that way. I was going to say that I'm bewildered by it, but I like awe better. I, I, yeah. I think awe just captures it better. Yes, it feels like the way. Yeah, because yeah. the bewildering, because it is bewildering. I mean, it I, is. Let's uh-huh. not uh, you know mess around here. It's like what the? Are you serious? Yeah. This, this, keeps, yeah. this kind of crazy. This, it, but it does. It does. Just, it, and, and it happens all different ways, too. I mean, it, yes, you were just describing very nicely, very beautifully, how if you are in a high vibe place and you, and you put stuff out there and so forth, you get more and more of those those really high vibe synchronicities. The part that I think we all skip because it's too painful to look at is when we're in the low vibe, the synchronicities happen there, too. We just don't like yeah. those particular synchronicities. Well, and, and just like the law of attraction, synchronicity doesn't have an opinion on good or bad. That's right. So yes. there, there's some bad synchronistic events. You know, they're, they're you know, happy to, you know, stepping out of your car the moment somebody is, you know, going to rob you. There, there's there's synchronistic events that are on the other side, yeah. too. Uh, and and that, that's the, yeah, that, those are ones we don't like to talk about, but, I, when you get to a place, I, I, I have uh, uh, one of my friends that I talk to has a, a 14-year-old son who loves to talk about these things. Mm. And so I was working with, I work with this lady and her son loves to come to sessions sometimes just to talk about things. And uh, so one day he said, uh, we were just talking about this synchronicity in general. And he said, he said, well, literally everything is synchronicity and connected. And I go, because he, he likes these words literally a lot. And I said, okay, well, I mean, is it literally? And he goes, yes, every single thing. And I go, is it? And, I, and I'm, I'm sort of like, tr- ch- I'm like, where are you getting that from? He goes, I don't know, but I know it's true. I don't know why it's true. I just know it's true. There's nothing that's not connected. And, and even bad things have a side of them that can lead us to good things that he, and so, so what he said, when, when I have something bad happen in my life, I try to understand it. it's still bad. It still feels bad, mm-hmm. but my ma- attitude is there will be a synchronistic event on the other side of that, that hopefully will somehow fix that. Like losing a job and also finding a better job, me getting fired from my company many, many years ago, uh, going to practice on my own. It, it, I mean, the synchronicity of, of the timing of how that happened and, the players involved and how I was in practice within two weeks after being fired. And with four, a few weeks after that, I'm full and fully loaded. I haven't been, you know, I never advertised a day in my life, you know, and it's just, those are crazy times. Christians have a, a good phrase for it. I think uh, they say that the Lord, uh, every time the Lord closes a door, he opens a window. Yes. And that's yes. essentially what that means. The idea that, okay, this didn't work out the way I was hoping and expected it would work out. But if I'm willing to trust, it means it's it's setting me up for something better to come along. Yes. Now, yes I do exactly. have to be open to that. I because yes. if I'm not open to that, here here this is the part that threw me for the longest time. If I'm not open to that, it will come along anyway, but I'll miss the bus. I won't that's, miss when it came. 
you have to be open to the idea. You have to be expecting that synchronistic next step yes. uh, to come along. I've, you're, I've, I've shared this story several times. I'll do the very, very brief. A guy got laid off at Count in the Bank of America in Charlotte years ago. Uh, him and I were talking. He was stuck in a depression, lost his $200,000 a year job. And, you know, really, he had some money saved up, but he didn't have a lot. As he was, he kept looking for accounting jobs. And it, during the financial crisis, there, weren't any. there were no accounting jobs. In 2008, there were no accounting jobs out there. There and weren't a lot of jobs in general, but that was probably near the bottom. The of worst, yeah. yeah. And so I came over to talk to him, and he asked me to ride up to the dump with him. He's gonna, he stopped along the way and picked up his neighbor's garbage because he lived in that rural area where they didn't have garbage collection. <laughs> Long story short, he, start, he started – he started just picking up garbage, charging thirty-five dollars a month. Turned into a gigantic company, had several trucks, ending up selling it to waste management for a few million dollars. And that was like all that all came out of a discussion because we were taking garbage to the dump. If he weren't open to it, if he weren't looking at it, he never even thought about it. He's like, I'm an accountant, I'm not a garbage man. And you know, he. he sold that business and and now he's in business with several other th he's very wealthy mm -hmm. and he said the greatest thing that ever happened was me getting fired from my two hundred thousand dollar year accounting job mm -hmm. and you know opening up he said it wasn't until i opened up my my belief system that i need to step away from i'm not an accountant per se i just need to make a living and i created this so he attracted this entire world and he did a lot of work i'm not trying to make it sound like the guy didn't do work he worked hard but my goodness, what a, what a great story. And that, that was a chain of events that never would have taken place if he didn't get fired from the job. So the, the, the loss of the job became a catalyst. I also have a belief that anybody that's just wildly successful, no matter what they're doing, almost always ha we're, we're coming back from something. You know, they almost always are like, this didn't work or this fell apart and I had to go out on my own. I know, I know, as you know, I work with several very wealthy families and right. uh, the, the people, you know, billionaire class and above. And those families all have stories. There was this event and I had to, I was left with no choice. And I went this way and it just became unlimited money. It became unlimited you know, wealth. And it, 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 I see that all the time. And that's what my, my message is, 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 is trying to look for the synchronistic event, tune into that, have that energy ready to go. There, there's we're never done if you woke up this morning we got a shot and there, there's stuff out there but you got to be tuned in to that opportunity that the synchronicity will point it out but if you're not tuned into it you're just stuck you're going to miss it in fact you made a really good point in your your storyline there you talked about how um they were at a point these billionaire families were at a point at some point in their lives where there was nothing they could do except go this way. That was the only option yeah. available. Yes. And, and what's really grabbing my attention about that comment is that in that kind of circumstance, it almost doesn't matter what your vibration is because you can only go one direction. You don't have any choice in the matter. So, so what? it's kind of a way that it, it's almost like we set ourselves up. Those of us who, who go that kind of a route, who end up going that kind of route, it's like we set ourselves up to fail, 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 only one possible way out. And then that one possible way out is what turns into everything. I often talk about in my story way back in the day, I was given the gift of no choice. Mm -hmm. I, I had all choices removed. Yeah. The only opportunity on the table was for me to work with uh, the guy at the uh, addiction recovery center that I was living at mm -hmm. and we had no money and that working there meant I just had free rent. I had to wait tables, had to do other things. There was no way possible from that beginning that I would could imagine today. I had no choice but to do that. I was a convicted felon, newly convicted. Uh, not a lot of people are looking to hire convicted felons that are, are out on the street for you know a month or two. So I had to go with what was there, wait tables, whatever was, was available. But the life I had today was given to me because I had no choice. If I would have had multiple opportunities, I might not have been successful. I, I still believe I would have been, but I, I really don't believe that I would have gotten this way because that's when I discovered the law of attraction, discovered all that stuff. And I used that path. And the life I have today was given because I had only one single choice 
to the, at that point. You know, after the after I made the decision to actually live and not kill myself, then the single choice of what direction to go. That was it. Well, that raises a very interesting question because, like you said, you did have that choice that you faced, you know, to either kill yourself or move on. And you chose right. to live, to move on. It's not a choice that everyone makes. Some people do kill right. themselves. We know that. Yes. You know, statistics are very clear about that. Raises the very poignant but also interesting question. And one I've asked you before, and I don't really expect an answer that, that totally answers it this time because I'm not sure there is one, but I'll ask it anyway. I, that doesn't stop me from asking the question. Sure. Why did you say yes? And why is it that some others say no? I, I, I have never found a clear answer on that. I, I don't know. I, I, I sat there for three hours and was, was thinking, you know, I could do this or, or not. And, 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 and the, the concept, my brain was telling me the easy thing to do would kill myself. I, I, I could just be done with it. And, you know, all I was in ungodly pain. Uh, at, uh, again, when I say that, this was all of my own creation. I created the whole scenario. I'm not blaming a human being. This was my, all my doing. Um, anxiety, depression, uh, felony conviction. If I didn't pull the trigger, I was going to face jail time. That was pre-jail. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had all that to go. And I knew all that was coming. And there was just something in me that said, and I, and I knew, uh, you know, I was a compulsive gambler. I knew the stipulation of that. If I didn't pull the trigger, I had to be done with gambling. That, that was part of the package. I just, that was draining everything out of me. I, I just had to be done with it. So, uh, when I did, I, I was, when I made the decision, you know, I put it down and sold the gun and, uh, just kept going. And, and it was, it was not pretty. It wasn't easy. It wasn't like, the next day, I'm like, oh, that's a great idea, Joel. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, in fact, there was a point where I'm going, I sold the damn gun. What the hell? Yeah. I, yeah. So there were multiple occasions that I, I felt I made the wrong mistake. But mm -hmm. again, one foot in front of the other, keep going. Momentum picked up. Along the way, the discovery of first reading the secret, then law of attraction took me to the next level. And then all of that led to it. So I don't have a good answer on why. I wish I did. I I, anybody that lost a family member to suicide, I, I have great empathy. I, 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 I was a, a finger squeeze away from it. I, it is, if you've ever been in that situation, I hope you haven't. Be, everybody thinks about killing themselves sometime in life, but to get to the point where the gun's in your mouth and triggers back, that's, there's a feeling about that that's just hard. It's just a really bad, bad way to be. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, but and to come back from that, you know, and, and made a commitment after that too, after I said, you know, I, I'm not going to ever do that again. And and no matter what, once I made the decision, I'm not going to quit, put on the gas. And, and it was a bunch of crappy jobs and it wasn't pretty. And, and, but it, it, it came together. Everything happened in order. And it's almost like if, if I were to turn this into a movie, it would not be a believable movie because it's like no, everybody go, there's no way all that crap happened. Nobody. In fact, I've had a couple of criticisms of people that read my book going, yeah, I don't think all that happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> the topic is synchronicity, and you just pulled another synchronicity on me because literally the comment I was going to make next was, this is very much like watching a movie. Yeah. In a movie, if it's a good movie, you are able to do what they call suspending your disbelief. If it's not a good movie then you aren't able to do that as easily. And very often we don't do it and we say, well, this sucks and I'm out of here and we stop watching the movie. Right. The difference there is that in one case, we were able to suspend our disbelief. In another case, we weren't. Right. And the same thing is holding true for this overall topic, this idea of what, you know, you're up against the wall, you have only one route out. Are you going to believe that this is a bunch of hooey, that this is, that, that there is no synchronicity, that nothing's going to come out of it, or are you willing to suspend your disbelief and just see what happens? And and yeah. I think that's really what the distinction is. That's the closest I've come to an answer. I think for whatever reason, God only knows why, you only know why perhaps, you decided to suspend your disbelief that it was all going to be terrible for some reason. Yeah. I, I did, I, I've often used the term, I had no hope. I just had hope of having hope one day. Mm. That It was that bad. I, I didn't even, I couldn't even... Other than me, I'm not going to, at that point, made a decision not to gamble. Other than winning the lottery, I don't know how I was going to get out of that hole. I mean, it, 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 <clears throat> there wasn't a path that made sense from there. Right. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it just didn't. 
And you know, I, I, I always ask people, uh, look at everybody in your life. Look at me and you as friends for a long time now. We've done this podcast for a long time. It was a synchronistic meeting for us. It, it started a, a, a multi-year friendship uh, that we actually have never met in person, which is always shocking to people. One of these but, days they will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but we, you know, so I have a lot of the, the the people that are closest to me in life right now. Some of them I didn't know ten years ago. I mean, yeah. it, it, my son Justin, I I didn't know him. I adopted him. You know, when when he was ten, he's eighteen now. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, so that my life has so many incredible people that didn't i mean they existed but they weren't existing in my orbit my most trusted friend right now is somebody that i just i don't even know how we got here it's just we're really good friends or very i I was never neither one of us intended to become such good friends but it was just this the chain of events kept pushing us and even if it sort of drifted for a while just kept pushing us back and uh we're really good friends and so I, i have a core group of people that you know, and I have some friends that I've had forever and ever that are still in my orbit, of course. But uh, I'm just amazed at the people that are here, uh, and and everything is happening in my life. But my clients, my uh, having the best career in the world, have a great job. I love what I'm doing. All those things, I, I've as you know, I've ever been incredibly grateful for all those things. So more synchronicity is taking place because of that, and and, and me noticing it all the time. Uh, it's a perfect storm. It's a perfect manifestation storm when you when, when you do it that way. I get the impression. I'm curious to see if you think it's the same way, but I get the impression that this whole synchronicity gag, if you will, this whole this whole synchronicity lark, let's put it that way, is something where we are progressively learning to suspend our disbelief and believe it in some way. And, and it, it's almost like we have to you know, take five steps, see a five step improvement, say, okay, I believe that far. And then take another three steps. Oh, okay. Well now I believe that far. It's, it, it's almost like we're, we're, we're continuously upgrading the belief by a little bit more, a little bit more, yes. a little bit more. Yeah. Time. Yes. It, well, it, you know, one, one of the analogies that I use to, to, to make that point is when it's at midnight tonight, um, it's dark. And if, if I want to go to Atlanta, I'm in Virginia right now. I get in my car and I start going. Mm-hmm. My headlights can only light up 600 feet or set, whatever they light up. That's all. Right. I know there's more road ahead, but I, I can only see right up there. You know, So life has a tendency that we can only believe what we see. Then you get to a place, I believe, where you're realizing, I don't need to see it anymore. But in the beginning process, that you're talking about those five things have to happen. Then I can believe you, you can get to a point that I, I don't think you need it that way. I just think you get to a point like it's all, it's, it's good. Now it's we're on cruise control. We, I don't even know where this journey is going. I don't know where I'm going to be in a year from now. I don't know what's going to be happening. I just know it's going to be good. Whatever that is, I, you know, no, and there's not a bad scenario for me anymore. There's no bad scenario. Well, let me ask you this. This is not a bad scenario. It's a good one, but you're, let, let's say you, you particularly, Joel Elston, you have achieved this level of belief and acceptance in this concept of synchronicity. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that, say, a year from now, that level will be higher? I, I do, because it's been higher every year. I don't know how it could be higher, but I exactly. accept. Yeah, yeah. I accept. We were talking about AI getting better and better. Right. What, what if What is my belief in that? So. My initial reaction was to tell you, no, I'm already there. But I also know historically uh, that I am every year I'm further into this process and synchronicity is included in my belief system. So I, I, I'm going to take it to another level. Maybe I get more in control of synchronicity. I don't know where it goes. But I remember we first started doing the show. We would often say, we don't really know what we're talking about with the law of attraction. <laughs> yeah, I, true. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was like, we, we were both, I, I use the term, we we're in kindergarten, you know? Yeah, and, right. We were learning, and and uh, and you and I spent multiple shows just us talking and learn to ourselves basically yep. about law of attraction. And uh, but but as everything started to unfold, it just became more and more amazing. Yeah. And you know that that's the thing for me is is once I get there, I know it's going to be better and better. So a, a year from now, there's there's unlimited possibilities. 
But I, I have no doubt I am going to be even further into this because I'm further into it than I was last year, as I was the year before. It's just, yeah. it's never gone backwards. I, I think you're right, and I, that, that's why I brought it up, is to point out that even when we think that we've got it, we find we we have even more to get about it. Um, yeah. To, to me, it's kind of like it's the flip side of why people go to the racetrack. They go to the racetrack to watch for car crashes. They, they, right. They're always anticipating that car crash. This is like going to the racetrack to anticipate that the cars are somehow going to go faster than they can. Yes. Yes. I see that. We, which is, I mean, even as I say that, I say, well, that sounds stupid. <laughs> well, it, but well, that's but the way it, it feels. It, well, feels it feels stupid, and yet I know it's true. <laughs> like there are times that I will actually say to myself, I said this sometime last, a week ago Monday, I had the craziest day of my life a long time in a long time. It just I was, we were late. On, I was late on the show. I had chaos ensuing everywhere. It was one of the. It was funny. Uh, you know, it was, it's serious when I say it, but, but I knew it was going to be okay. I, I wasn't like, I was just exhausted, you know, cause I spent the whole, you know, four 30 till in the morning till, you know, going to bed at 10 o'clock and full of chaos. That was a bet long day. Yeah. But I remember actually along the way in the middle of this one, I can't wait to see how this works out. Cause I can't see how it's going to work out <laughs> at all. And, uh, I knew it was going to work out. Mm. I did not see a path of how it was going to work out. Right, right. And that was the that was the thing. So, uh, yeah, I I, 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 yeah. I I remember the, the the exchange. I remember getting the text from you. Can we start yeah. later and so forth? You, you proposed starting one hour later, which I was fine with. Yeah. And then I remember getting the text about twenty minutes later. Now I'd already decided. Okay, well, I'm going to take the next hour to do some stuff, and I had <laughs> my dinner. I was doing all this stuff, and <sighs> then I got a text from you that says, "Oh, I'm done faster than I thought." And all I could think yeah. was, there is a perfect example of letting go and something just coming together. I just know it. I don't even know what the story was. I can just tell from the timing of the thing. That's yeah, the yeah. Well, and and also what I, I try because I I don't like to scare my friends with stuff like this because I you know I can be so weird. Uh, but uh, which I by the way do not take offense to at all. So I love I that love weird feel. Actually, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I I have to filter it because. I really believe that the people in my world are there on purpose. They were, it's been intended. It's there. They're there. I've attracted these exact people and you know, it, it, it's like, Oh, so I, I just sort of treat them like, yeah, you're, you're supposed to be here. So we're supposed you know, and sometimes it takes them a little while to get used to that. Okay. That's a little weird, but yeah, <laughs> but it, it works. And that, you know, synchronicity plays such a role in, in, society and you know, our, our self-fulfilling prophecies they there's a lot of things in society that you know we believe this thing's going to happen and then we it happens is exactly we said well i mean could it be because we were so influenced toward that and there there before the pandemic um i made it i i don't remember exactly where i made it i don't think i was on the show at that point but i i told a group of clients who are especially young clients who are very worried. I said, I have no idea. I want to make a bold statement right now. I have no idea how, because this is like March 13th of 2020 when they shut <laughs> everything down. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I don't know how, but on the other side of this pandemic, we're going to be far better than we are today. We're going to be financially, we're going to be healthier than we've ever been. We're going to be financially ahead of where we're are, we are. And I and I can't not remotely tell you the path of how that's going to happen, but I want to make sure that we do that. And every single one of those clients that are on the call have all commented like, "You literally predicted that." And I said, "I just I didn't predict it. I just believed it, and and, and, and it came true." I I have every year, yeah, I'm, every year I make more money. I always make more money every year, and but it's been like on turbo charge since the pandemic because I just decided that's you know just. It just let's go, you know, and, and it, it, uh, I never quit meeting in person. Uh, you know, I, 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 my theory was they, they said, you know, you can't meet in person. I go, who are the police that are coming to my office to tell me that? So let's just go. I, I can't wait to be arrested for meeting with people. Nobody ever came, you know. So, uh, and I was the only person in town basically meeting with people. So, you know, I was busy before that. Then I got an incredible waiting list and, 
you know, the, the, the idea that I had several business opportunities that came from that. I had a couple of people that were struggling that I, I you know, they, I, I loaned them some money uh, in their business. And in exchange for that, I got a little teeny, teeny piece of their company. Well, they've become wildly successful. And I have, you know, ownership in like six companies that just swallow a little bit, but very valuable now. So wow. there, there, there were multiple opportunities for me to, to do that. And I, I, again, when I, when I first heard everything, everybody was panicking and I was just simply saying, here comes the opportunities. I don't know how it's going to be there. I, I never doubted that for a moment. And it, here we are. And so yeah. it's just, that, that's how this works. Synchronicity is, it's ever present, as Carl Jung said. It's just you got to be able to see it, and you got to if, if you're looking for it, it's there every single day. And I can also attest to the fact that you don't actually have to totally believe it. You just have right. to believe it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that that summarizes me. That summarizes my life. I mean, you know that from all the times that we've had these shows and had these conversations. I I talk a great game of believing until it actually comes to believing and then sometimes i do sometimes I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I, I, yeah and but you also i have had a front row seat from the beginning in the beginning wow wow you you, you had to really struggle with some of that stuff i mean you were you were you're very skeptical about yourself in the beginning i remember oh, that years ago oh yeah, yeah. uh you've come really a long way I mean, a long way in your belief systems. And I, I, I think you do believe most of it. You, you get in your own head sometimes, like a lot of people do. It's not, you know, but you're really good at it. I, I on the other hand, I just in full blast, completely turned to level 10. I believe it. And just there, there, there's nothing, you know, it, it, it's a cool way to live. It's just, you know, let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. It, and, and I'm appreciating that more and more, just how cool it is. And by the way, thank you for that. That was very nice. Um, it, it's, it's still amazing to me how much I have to learn and how much I have learned. Because you're right. I've learned a, pun, a bunch. I've learned a ton in that time. And I also can tell there's a whole lot more. <laughs> I could actually become overwhelmed by it. I have in the past. Yes. You know, I, I can easily become overwhelmed by just how much there is to learn. I'll tell yes. you one thing that's helping me. We, and this kind of ties us back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the show. AI. There, there's something about having an AI to talk to and to get ideas from and you know, ask the AI to help solve these different problems and things like that, that for me provides a calming influence. And what's really odd about it is I can tell there are many inflection points in the middle. And by an inflection point, I mean things that happen during these, these conversations I'm having with these AIs where I can see I could go completely off the wall about it. I could get pissed about something and I could get frustrated about something. Um, at times I actually do get frustrated, but most often I find myself looking at that, that conversation while I'm having it, because it is a conversation, even if it's with a machine, I'm having a conversation. I can look at that conversation and realize this is yet one more opportunity for me to let go. This is one more time. And, and for some reason, Having that AI there makes it easier for me. I don't yes. oppose the idea that it makes it easier for everybody, but it has made it easier for me. Well, but what you've done, and this is really important, you've decided to make it easier for you to have the AI yes. there, the AI there. So that there are people that are ranting and raving against AI that are troubled by it, that every morning wake up and are furious about it because they made they made the decision to be pissed off about it. Right. Uh, you you made the decision to embrace it and it's there for you so again perspective and and your it turns on so the the energy that you feel toward that you're it, it's comforting to have it it's there and it's something you bounce stuff off of uh, so you you believe it to be positive in your life if you believe it to be negative and fighting against it and wailing against it you know it, it it's going to attract the opposite side you're going to hate it there there was a uh a friend of mine on Facebook, he, he's a old school, you know, he, he's very conservative back in the day kind of guy. And he was ranting and raving about, you know, Facebook and censorship and all this other stuff. And I said, well, have you contacted them for a refund and to cancel your membership? And he just, he knows how I am. I said, so you voluntarily are getting this free service from Facebook and then you're going to bitch and moan about it. And then how they're going to, I said, I have a simple solution. Just get off Facebook. If it's bothering you, 
That's a shocking statement to him. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I play, you know, my Facebook is simply positive stuff. I don't do drama. I don't do politics. I, I just, my, there's two things. There's usually law of attraction stuff, of some sort, you know, positive stuff or funny stuff. That's mm -hmm. pretty much on my Facebook page. There's right. not a, you know, so I, I don't care. Facebook can do whatever they want to do to him. Say, I don't care. I don't have to have Facebook. It's just a thing. But for him, it just, well, every time they make these changes and I know I'm being censored and I'm being this, I go, then just get off. It just, yeah, yeah it, 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 it doesn't, it, he, you know, get your refund. It's free. It, oh, I forgot it's free. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I love that comment. I want to remember that one. <laughs> yeah. Just like, we, I, would, I would just uh, quit and get your money back. Get your money you back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 because people will rant about all that stuff. It's not a real thing. It doesn't matter. We don't need it. Mm. It's a great yeah. point. It's a really good yeah. point. It, well, well, I guess I could say that we do need it for the exact same reason you just gave. We need it because we decide that we need it. Yeah. Well, everything. You know, the, the, I, w I was explaining to Justin the other day that back when I was a kid, we none of us had cell phones. We all mm -hmm. had landlines. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to call your friend, you had to go through their parents. You had to, the parents had to answer the phone. Mrs. Smith, how are you this evening? Uh, this is Joel. May I speak to Steve, please? Joel, how are your grades? What's going on? I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, you, you had to go through like a filter to get, you know, if I called a girl, oh, the worst thing back in the day, being 15 years old and calling a girl oh, yeah. and, have, and having to talk to her dad. Oh, yes. Mr. Mr. Johnson, this is Joel Elson. Uh, May I speak with Kathy, please? And uh, uh, Joel, how are you? What's going on? You know, I had to. I had to talk. Nowadays, kids bypass the parents entirely. They never even talk to the parents. Yeah. So you know, it, it's it's you know a concept back in the day that you left a message for somebody. You might not. Somebody might not get your message for two days. You know, it, it's just. Yeah. We had answering machines. You had to remember to check your answering machine. If somebody didn't give you a note or whatever. And those are all exciting. You know, back then, we were like, we got plenty of technology. And nowadays, it seems ridiculous. So the evolution of what we have, we decide we need stuff, and then we need it. Or you decide you don't need it, don't it. One of my ultimate goals, and, and, you know, and, and I may never get here. I, because I love what I do so much, and I've always said I'll never retire. All my technology is based on my business. You know what I'm saying? It's all about business and stuff like that. I used to think, you know, one day I'm going to just take my cell phone when it's all done toward the end, just throw it in the ocean and just, you know, have a landline. If you ever want to get hold of me, just maybe I'll answer one day, you know. And I've evolved because I now see it as the, we have, I have access, especially with AI, I have access to all the information to ever exist on the planet. And I can filter it any way I want. It, it's become such an amazing tool mm -hmm. that I, I don't use it for silliness. So, I mean, it, it's, it, it, you know, me, I'll, I can do my deep dive researches while I'm sitting at the airport, going into great detail about whatever, I want any kind of quantum theory or connection. And uh, I love having access to that information. It's amazing now. So I've gone from wanting to get rid of my cell phone to, now embracing the technology side. I don't care about the messages in the phone. Lord, I'm tired of that. Uh, but the information, the computer side of my phone is amazing. It is. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, and you used a word that I, I think will tie into the, what I think is the last, port, last portion of our conversation. And one that I didn't intentionally say for the end, but I'm kind of glad I did because it really, for me, is the core of the whole topic. Synchronicity at its root, as, as your, your young friend pointed out, is where everything is connected. Yes. Now, that has a very important component to it, which means we are people connected. Yes. And that connection is there regardless of whether we exercise it. In fact, there are lots of them that are there that we never exercise. And Absolutely. With, with the modern technology, what many people have done is they've stopped exercising it entirely or, or almost entirely. Which leads to a very interesting question. What happens to your experience with synchronicity if you start exercising more of those connections? Mm. 
right? Because oh, I mean, yeah. that, that's that's the foundation of it, right? The foundation of the synchronicity is that you have connections that are going on that are active. You, you make the, the point that action is the key verb in, in any kind of change that happens. Well, the change that happens in this particular case is an increase of synchronicity. And the only way that's going to happen is if those connections start increasing their activity. One, one of the things, when I start working with, say, somebody's 17, 18, about to go to college or they're in college, uh, one of my biggest pieces of advice, and this is to anybody, the biggest thing you're ever going to develop in your life is your network. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I mean, everybody you come in contact, get, your, get their name in your phone, jot down briefly what they do, who they are. I have a network of thousands of people. And, and, you know, it's an amazing amount of contacts uh, and they're all over the country. They're all into different things. And then when I if so, if I want to create synchronicity, I could engage my network. And, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I put a synchronistic event in play. If, if you know, if, if I, I know a guy in uh, Denver who does uh, psilocybin uh, guided trips, you know, where they therapeutic trips. Uh, I know him and, and we, we talked at great length. I know what he's about. I trust what he would do. Uh, it's not illegal in Colorado. It's not specifically legal for uh, therapeutic thing, but it's not illegal. So it's, it, there's a loophole there. Uh, I know, I know people all over the country. I know people in Israel. I know people in Europe. That network is a, it, it is a, ch it churns synchronicity and, and I, if I tap into it, if I just go into my network, I have unlimited connections that I can I can go on that. Now I don't do it every day, but you know if if, if I need it, I go to it, and it it's fascinating to see it work. So I, I I'm agreeing. If we increase connectivity, you increase synchronicity. It's just the action of of connection is synchronicity. It's just it, it can't help. You got to take you got to churn it sometimes to make it work but it works. And, and when we talk about that increase in connectivity and increasing the activity with those connections, what we're really talking about at its core is increasing our connections with others. Yes. It, it isn't even necessarily so much what's going to come out of that. We can be sure something is going to come out of it because that's how synchronicity works. It's more about what do those connections themselves deserve in terms of our attention? Yes. How much attention can we give? Why would we want to give attention to that particular connection or this particular connection? In other words, what's in it for us where the connection is concerned? Because yes. if we can start answering that question, first of all, that's what gets us onto that path of, okay, I'm going to exercise more and more connections. But secondly, that's also how we end up getting the synchronicities we want rather than the ones that we don't want. Exactly. And I also believe that this is going to get a, really a bad thing to say with a couple minutes left. So I don't want to go too deep, but yeah. uh, <laughs> okay. what, what I really believe is the connection that you're seeking is already there. And, and you, you, everything you want is already here. It's here. You just haven't tuned into it. And synchronicity appears to make that connection for you. It's like, Hey, look here, let, yeah. let me connect that for you. It's already here. The, the life you want's already here. You haven't connected with the pieces of it. And that, you know, like I said, I don't want to get too deep in it because that's a whole different deep dive. But you know, that, that idea exists that, that you, you, you tune in to abundance. You don't attract them. You just tune in. It's already here. The abundance is here. You're not seeing it. You're not allowing it. You're not connecting to it. And synchronicity is a tool of that. Yeah, they, what, you're, you're making me think about prior conversations here on the podcast um, with some really cool guests that we've had and co-hosts over the years. But one in particular was with David Strickle, who, who you've met and who uh, is, is sort of a, a equivalent of Esther Hicks and Abraham. He channels uh, the stream of David, although he, he actually isn't even doing much of that kind of channeling anymore, that trans channeling. But uh, he was once talking with me about this exact concept, and, and then we switched over to where he channeled the stream of David so I could talk to the stream and, and get their input. And, and what I was learning from that tied directly into what we're talking about here. In that, that connectivity, that, 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 that synchronous activity that happens is an activity that it's kind of like a muscle that when you engage it, 
it, it gets more powerful. It becomes a bigger portion of your life. And more importantly, it becomes self-fulfilling. By self-fulfilling, I don't mean necessarily that something synchronous happens, although certainly that's going to be something that happens as well. But what becomes self-fulfilling is your desire to, to develop those connections. And in those the, the, the desire to develop those connections, you end up creating what the stream calls the expansion of all that is. And in that expansion of all it is, I mean, that, that's the stream's answer about why we're here. Yes. Which is a little bit different yes. from Abraham's answer, which is basically chocolate. Which, and I, and I buy into the chocolate argument entirely. Right. Uh, right. But, but the stream's answer is slightly different. It's basically the same idea, but it's, it's just expressed differently. We're here to, to expand, not just ourselves, but everything. And, and we do that through our connections, through our choices, through our beliefs, and, and all that kind of thing. So, and I didn't even understand what that meant. I mean, I remember the first time that I heard that and I said, the expansion of all that is, what the hell are you talking about? What have you been smoking? But since then, I've come to appreciate what that really is. That that expansion of all that is, it, it includes my own growth. Yes. It also includes everyone else's growth. We're all growing off of all of these connections, even the ones that we aren't directly contacted with. We may be indirectly, but the ones that we're directly contacted with, are that's, that's a very limited range of all the different ways that we're affected for the better through this expansion of who we are, of what we know, of, of, of all that is. And, yes. and, and the more I think about that, the more that just blows my mind because yes. it, it's, it's an infinite process. Well, and, and that's what makes it all exciting. <clears throat> there is, I don't know all the answers, <clears throat> but it is infinite. It's mm -hmm. all infinite. There, there's no, you know, we're here. It's not, we're not here to be miserable. We're here to, be synchronistic. We're here to connect. We're here to, that's the point. And these physical bodies will give up, you know, they're, they're going to be done at some point. And that energy, these are my beliefs, of course, uh, my energy then will go to what I consider source and knowing me, I'll probably within about eight seconds, be right back here. <laughs> doing I, some I crazy, <laughs> yeah. Some crazy life somewhere. Uh, again, that's my belief. Uh, but, we're here to do that. Like you saw, expand. We're here to connect. We, we didn't come here to just be born, live 72.6 years and then die. And it, it, it was never that. It's never been that. And it's exciting when you figure out there's a point to it all. And the point is, like you're saying, whether it's, you know, infinite growth or whatever, it's, it's about connecting. It's about this is a big, gigantic game to me. And I love to see how it unfolds. It's amazing. I, I love to see it unfold. I love to be part of the unfolding. I think yes, that's, that's the part I always have to remind myself the most about. I mean, a lot of the time in my life, I I had this belief, and there's that word again, I had this belief that I wasn't really a part of it. I was more like an observer mm -hmm. of the whole yeah. thing. And, and it, it, even to this day, I still have that to a certain extent. I have a lot more than I did back then of the belief that, no, I'm a part of it right now. And I have been all along. But it, it's almost like that that sense of disconnect, which really isn't like you said, you're never really disconnected. You're always right. connected. Always connected. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's more like a, an, an ignoring, ignoring the connection or ignorance of the connection. But the connection is still there. That dis, that feeling of disconnect is really that feeling of, oh, I'm not really a part of it. Right. And the, the reconnection is the realization, yeah, you always were and you still are and you always yeah. will. Yeah, and, and there's a version of the story. You're you're the star of it all. Yeah. Uh, you're, it, yeah, yeah. It's your it's your journey, and that's what I love talking about the ultimate synchronicity. We're all having our own journeys, and they're they're taking place within everybody else's journeys. Right. That's fascinating to me. And along the way, there's going to be some people that are there for a lifetime. There's going to be there to teach a lesson. There's going to be people that are there for a short time. You don't never know, and you never know which which quest you know side quest of the journey is the main quest it's fascinating to me i i don't you know i am capable and this isn't likely going to happen but i'm capable of picking up everything and moving to lake tahoe and whatever you know i, I could do i i'm capable of doing that immediately mm -hmm. uh, and not likely to do it uh but i could and so i've, I've always been open to the idea of 
what's next? And I, it, I, I view it. It's like today's another chapter. I can't wait to see what happens. And some days it's just batshit crazy stuff happens, and, and I laugh at it. And other days it's, it's transformative. And some days seem sort of mundane, but they all bring something to the table. And yes, that's important. It's very important. The contrast last Monday that was so chaotic. Today's Monday was was much calmer. Um, both have value. They both have value. I, I, you know, one wasn't bad, one wasn't good. Uh, I appreciate some of the calmer days after the crazy days, but I also, I love the fact that whatever life threw at me last Monday, me and my team knocked it out. We just, we crushed it. I mean, in fact, it, it, I, I was expecting it to be much harder than it was. I was sort of fascinated, like, we got through that pretty easy. Yeah, and, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was awesome. So uh, it, it, everything, it, it almost went the entire show, not say that, Every single thing is perspective-based, including synchronicity. Uh, perspective is the dictator of it all. It's, it's, you know, you, you, you can't, if you're not, if for, your perspective is not believing that synchronistic events are taking place in your behalf and, and really embracing that, they still could happen. You don't have a full belief. You don't have a full belief, but you're going to miss a lot of them if you're not looking for, I see them every day. And I'm like, wow, that was a good one. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm going to use that as a as a way to draw it all to a conclusion by saying, um, we've we've told you what we think, what we believe, what we we've told you what we believe about our perspectives, what we think about synchronicity, and so forth. To our listeners, I want to ask you to answer for yourself one question: What do you believe? We'll see you all mm -hmm. next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Mm -hmm.